So we have seen how signal space can be exploited to reduce the complexity of the receiver structure, the number of correlators, the number of test statistics which are being uh, calculated and delivered to the decision algorithm. So what we're going to address now is how to uh, use signal space to reduce uh, the complexity of the algorithm. And the reason, the way that we're going to reduce the complexity of the algorithm is that we're going to think in terms of the geometry, we're going to think about decision regions. And these decision regions, we're going to see um, geographic, uh, geometrically and understand what's going on, and then we can look at how this can actually be exploited inside of the algorithm, the decision algorithm, uh, using signal space. So this uh, discussion of decision regions for coherent detection is found in section 4.3 and section 4.4 of our textbook from Sklar. So the geometric interpretation is uh, that we want to minimize the distance between the received vector and each one of the symbols, right? That's our strategy. If it's a maximum likelihood, this is it alone. If it's map, we might have a, a weight vector as well, but essentially we're looking for uh, a region. And we're going to treat the maximum likelihood example in all of these. So one way that we can reduce the complexity of the decision algorithm and at the same time get some intuition on how we do that uh, is by looking at these ideas of decision regions. So we want to find a region that is predetermined, pre-calculated, known before we do all of our reception, and then have it be the equivalent uh, to use something if the received vector falls in a certain region, this region is going to be the basis of a decision. So it'll be the equivalent of choosing the closest. Instead of saying calculate the distance between each one, uh, instead of calculating that distance each time, I'm going to instead say, which region did I fall in? And depending on the region I fall in, that's going to be my decision without actually calculating a distance. Very similar to what we saw previously with threshold detection. So in the linear sampling receiver, we saw threshold detection. Now we're going to see the equivalent, but in signal space. So let's start with a constellation uh, with three symbols. And uh, for simplicity, I'm going to suppose that these are equal energy symbols. And so they can be written, uh, you know, they're the same distance from the origin, so they're, they're, sent, they're located on some circle at a certain distance from the, from the origin. Uh, suppose that I wanted to say, choose the closest. And I want to divide this into, there's three symbols. I want to divide this uh, plane into three regions, and I'm going to say if you fall in this region, choose S1. If you fall in this region, choose S2, S3. How would I define that, that region? Well, uh, it's not too uh, difficult. How do, we, how do we choose the nearest symbol directly from the vector received? So, for instance, uh, suppose that the received vector is here, right there. Suppose I just take that receive vector, of course I can calculate what's the distance here, what's the distance here, what's the distance here, but that's three calculations. Is there some other way I can do it just based on knowing uh, this, loca the, this location, this symbol? How do I do it? Well, the first step is to take any two. Let's take S1 and S2. The first step is to uh, draw the perpendicular bisector between the two. So I draw a line connecting the two symbols. At this line, I put in a, at the midpoint, I draw a line perpendicular. Okay, that's step one. I do the same thing for the next pair. So now I look at between S2 and S3. Here is a line connecting them. At the midpoint, I draw the perpendicular bisector, bisector dividing in two, uh, and I do that a third time. So now I have these three perpendicular bisectors, and uh, you can see now, these are the lines that separate uh, S1 from S2, S2 from S3, and S1 uh, from S3. And with these um, bisectors, I can define my three regions of decision. So if my received vector falls in this region, I will choose S2. If it falls anywhere in this region, I choose S1. If it falls in this region, I, I choose S3. 
So these definition of regions just saves me the complexity, the computational cost of calculating each time I receive a vector, what, is, what are the distances between the, uh, each one of the symbols. So now instead of having a calcu three calculations to do, I really just have to identify is it in region one, region two, or region three. Depending on which region it is, my decision is made. So the answer to that question was regions are the way that we can uh, avoid the calculation of each one of those uh, distances. So let's take an example from one of our modulation formats. Let's take MPSK. In this case, it's 8 PSK that I'm illustrating here. So one receiver structure would have been uh, if I have a receive vector uh, way up here, then I would calculate, you know, the distance between this receive vector and this first point, the distance between that receive vector and this symbol point, etc., and I would have like eight distances uh, to calculate. Um, of course, uh, I could not have to do correlations. I wouldn't have to do an eight correlations. I just do two correlations, and I would have the, co the coordinates of that. Uh, receive vector here. That was a savings in the structure, but now I'm talking about a savings in, instead of having to calculate here, calculate eight different distances, what do I do instead? Well, what I do instead is I take the coordinate and I just calculate the arc tangent. I say, what is the phase of this uh, received vector? And then from the phase, I just do what I call a slicer. So I take, uh, like here are uh, two adjacent points, and I look at the midpoint between them, and I call this as a slicer. This defines a region. So everything between these two um, uh, perpendicular bisectors defines a region where I'm going to choose that this was the symbol that was sent. And so which region, here, here are eight regions, which region I fall in is all based on What's the phase of this received vector? It doesn't matter if that received vector is way up here or down here. The length doesn't matter. What matters is only the phase. So I reduce the complexity by once I have the coordinates, I just calculate the phase. And now I don't have to do eight different distance calculations. I do one phase calculation. And then I say, uh, does the phase fall uh, in this area? Then this is the uh, symbol I choose. If the phase falls in this region, then, you know, in this region, then this is the, the symbol that was sent. So it has reduced the complexity of the decision algorithm. So the next part, I said, was, you know, first we looked at the structure. Uh, we saw that the structure was determined by the modulation. And I want to talk about analyzing the performance. I said we'll, we'll talk about that afterwards. Now the decision regions are the ways that we can analyze the performance. Uh, just like previously with the um, linear sampling receiver threshold, it was the threshold that allowed us to calculate the probability of error, we will see that the boundaries of the decision regions uh, will help us um, to find the performance. But even beyond that, we're going to take our results from the binary case. So from the binary case, we had a very easy way of calculating what the probability of error was. I did it for on-off keying, I did it for BPSK. Uh, it was the distance between the two points that decided to determine the bit error rate. Really simple. So I not only am I going to use these decision regions to make things easier to calculate, but I'm also going to exploit this binary case. So decision regions, exploiting the binary results, are going to let us analyze the performance of really almost all of our, all of our modulation formats. So I said we're going to exploit uh, the binary analysis that we did, even in the larger case of larger signal constellations. Let me just give you an idea how that works. Suppose I'm in a two-dimensional space and that I have a large number of points in the constellation. Suppose that I choose any arbitrary two, and just for simplicity, I'm going to suppose that one of my basis vectors uh, falls across these two. Um, you know, it's possible to do it that way. That's the way I choose to do it. So when will I make an error when I'm choosing between these two? Maybe there's a whole bunch more, but I'm worried about making the mistake between choosing signal one and signal two. Well, there's going to be some bisector 
that is between S1 and S2 that's going to be part of the decision region. And essentially, I'm worried about when is the, the um, received vector going to fall in the wrong decision region. So if, uh, for instance, the noise is not large, suppose the true um, signal sent was S2, and because of noise, the received vector is pushed. So the, the point is here, and this is uh, the noise pushing R over to this point. So uh, in this case, the noise has pushed it, but it's stayed in the same region. Um, there's a certain component of the noise, which is, you know, if I look at the noise component, which is along the line that joins these two uh, symbols, uh, so if I look at the projection here on this basis vector, so the coordinate of the noise uh, along this basis vector, it was short enough that it didn't push it into the next region. It didn't go past this uh, uh, um, border between the two regions. So there's no error in this case. In this case, here's the noise vector pushing R so that, you know, the R is over here. This is the noise vector in yellow, pushing R over. And in this case, the noise contribution along the line connecting S1 and S2 was large enough that it pushed it over and caused an error. So this is the analysis we're going to use. When, does error, when do errors occur? An error will occur when the noise contribution in between two symbols is greater than half the separation. So if I think of the distance between S1 and S2 is D, then whenever the noise contribution between the two of them is greater than half of their separation, then I'm going to have an error. So probability of error is the probability that this noise sample is greater than this separation divided by 2. So that's the idea of I'm going to take this concept, if I just had take two points in this larger collection, this larger constellation, when does an error occur? And I'm going to use this simple calculation, this simple equation, in order to come up with an approximation to what happens when I have a whole bunch of points in the constellation. So how do we calculate the probability of error for M array case now that we have decision regions? So I have decision regions, and I want to use this binary case in order to give me the probability of error for the m -ary case. So how do I get from m -ary to binary? Well, I go back to this definition of the minimal distance. Now I can think about taking each one of the points in the constellation, taking them pairwise, two at a time, and looking at well, what is their separation, what is their separation. And the idea of the minimal distance was every time I do that to try and find the smallest one. And of course, the closer the signals are, there are more errors. Uh, that's what we discussed earlier in terms of, uh, you know, what is the definition of minimal distance. But now, uh, what I'd like to play on is the fact that this minimal distance is the most important distance, that it's going to dominate the performance. It's, it's the feature of the constellation that really dominates the performance. And so it's like a key parameter in any uh, constellation.